Hi everyone, welcome back to Majora's Mask. So, in the last video, the last thing I did was play the Song of Time again, put me back to the start of the first day, which is exactly what I want. Um, actually, as a matter of fact, what I really want is to be on the night of the first day, so I'm going to play the Song of Double Time, which is just each note of the Song of Time played twice, and uh, this will take me to the night of the first day. And the reason I want to be there is because the first thing I want to do, really, in Clock Town, before I sort of venture out into the field, is um, get the biggest bomb bag that's available to me right now. Now, I could just go into the bomb shop right now and buy one, and it would be, like, it would hold 20 bombs, but if I do this other little thing, then I can get one that holds 30, so I'm going to do that instead. Um, I said in the last video that I was maybe going to off-screen the bomber side quest and just write down the number. I've decided not to do that. Um, I will just show it off, because actually there's some rupees in there that I can, that I can get as well, and I want to maybe do that before. I do this other side quest, so first thing I'm going to do is just go over to this chest, which is always reliable because it always has a silver rupee in it, which is worth a hundred. You'll probably see me grabbing that chest quite a bit, just because it's like really convenient and stuff. Okay, so I'm going to head back to North Clock Town, and oh, actually before I do that, oops, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to stay as normal Link. There's a couple of masks that I can grab really quickly. One of them's in here, it's the Song of Storms guy from the first game. We sort of saw him there when the camera glitched a little bit, if I just listened to him. Actually, uh, no, I'm not going to do that right now, never mind. I want to get the Bomber's Notebook first, so that will be logged in it. So yeah, the very first thing I want to do is get that notebook. So, straight to North Clock Town. You might notice, well, I've not made a point of this, obviously, but I'm going to walk past this owl statue here, I'm not going to activate it. I think we're going to see the North Clock Town cutscene. But um, yeah, the elf statues, there's a reason that I'm not going to activate that one just yet. There's a certain glitch that I'm going to be showing off later on in the playthrough. I'll be starting it in this video, but you won't really see the full effects of it until later. Which um, is going to take advantage of that. The fact that I've not hit anything, any of the main elf statues. Okay, so whatever, let's just start this quest. And... Yeah. See, I don't know what his code is, and it, it changes based on the file, like, it's th there's no way to predict it, it's completely random, it's determined when you make your file. So, you know, I, I don't know what it is, I'm just gonna quickly play through this. As long as I can get it done before, like, I think it's like quarter past twelve or something, then, uh, we should be good. It always annoys me how, whenever you catch one of these, you can't press A to get rid of the text box right away. There's Sakon right there, we'll be dealing with him shortly. Because, um... Yeah, I don't know, it just like makes you wait. If you don't press B to make the text go quicker, then it lets you press A as soon as the blue box appears, but if you press B to go through it quickly, then it doesn't, which has always bugged me a little bit. Okay. Should be able to get him down just by running like this. There he is. Yeah, some of these guys can be a little bit annoying to catch. I mean, none of them are really that bad. The best way to do it is to kind of trap them like this, but... Hopefully I'll just run into where I am. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's going to, so I'm going to have to... Oh, okay, I got him back out. <laughs> oh, I love it when he does that, because then he just stays. He thinks he's hidden, but there's no hiding from me. I'll always find you. It is kind of weird to be doing this quest not on the first cycle, isn't it? It's not something you would usually do. Right, so the last one is up at the, the top of West Clock Town. Just quickly run up and grab him. Where is he? I'm stuck behind a post. Okay, so that's them. They're going to tell me the code now, which I'm going to need to get into the observatory. Right, so it's going to be something, something, one, something, something, because the red guy is always one. Okay, let's see. Okay, so it's five, two, one, four, three. Five, two, one, four, three. Just got to remember that number. That balloon's back somehow. Quickly gonna go and get the bomber's notebook. It's five four one two three, wasn't it? God, I hope that's right. Shit. <laughs> uh oh. Right, okay, so it's definitely five something one something three, right? So Okay, okay, so I just got two of the numbers around the wrong way. I was slightly worried there that I was gonna have to off screen that, so I'm going to pop in here, take off the Deku mask, 
and then come back out. And these guys are going to think like that I've gotten in there without the code or whatever, so... The leader is going to give me the bomber's notebook, which is required for 100%. I don't really know if filling it up is required, but I want to fill it up as much as I can. I just want to have the notebook, really. So, now that I have this, there's still a little bit of time before that one event is going to happen. Like I said, it's at like quarter past twelve or whatever, so... In the meantime, I'm going to head back to the laundry pool in South Clocktown and get... The, the mask from that one guy down there, the Song of Storms guy. Just back walk because it's quicker. Actually, while I'm here, I'm going to pick up the fairy again because there's another mask that I can get from doing this as well. If you return the fairy as normal Link instead of Deku Link, she gives you a mask instead of the magic mirror. Obviously, I've already got the magic mirror, so don't need to worry about that anymore. Alright, okay, so... Another reason that I'm doing it like this is it means that all the money that I've got, I won't need to... Wait, I don't even know what I'm talking about. I was going to say, like, I won't have to buy the bomb bag, but you still do need to buy the bomb bag. This little quest that I'm going to doesn't actually give you the bomb bag. It just allows you to buy a bigger one than the standard one. But you still need to buy it. It's still, like, 90 rupees or something, I think. Alright, so I got the Bremen mask from him, which is, uh... I mean, largely useless. I mean, it's got one use in the game. A lot of the masks you'll find are kind of not as useful as they probably could have been, or should have been. The 3DS version, I played through that the other week there, and it's for one of the masks that is literally useless in this game. They, they actually added a use for it, but still useless in the original one, of course. Alright, so I'm just going to hang about here until 12.15. In the meantime, I guess I'm going to go up and get this heart piece. I'll try and get it as a Deku again, just to see if I can. I, well, I'll make it easy on myself. I'll start from here and see if I can make it to the tree as a Deku. Probably not, but um, we'll see. Oh, no, don't you start. Nope. I don't even know if that's possible, actually. It was nowhere close to it there. Let's see if I can get over here. Nah, forget it. I'll just do it as normal Link. Once again, I'm pressing E as soon as I get up here so that he grabs it as soon as he touches it. Because if you don't do that, then he'll just slip back down. At least they usually will, unless your aim is very precise. What the hell? Right, forget it. We're just going to do this instead. I don't even know why I was bothering with that other way when you can just do this. It's much quicker and much easier. And yeah, like I mentioned, it is going to be a 100% playthrough, so, you know. I'm going to want to get all the heart pieces. I'm not going to get all of the ones in Clock Town that I can for now. I'm just going to get, you know, ones that happen to be on my route or whatever. Later on, I'm going to come back and get all the extra ones. Like, I'm not going to do the Deku Playground right now because, you know, there's a couple of things in Clock Town that require you to do things on each day, so I'm probably just going to do that all at once in one video later on. Okay, here we go. I think the, yeah, the bomb lady is here. This scumbag is going to try and rob her, so I'm going to go and kick his ass. Yeah, I mentioned that I was playing the 3DS one recently. Like, you just have to cut this off him and that's it. And the 3DS one, as soon as you cut it, like, it just fades to black. But in the original, you have to wait for him to run out, which is kind of annoying. And yeah, I think this is the only other place in the game where you hear that music, aside from, like, the intro. It's kind of cool. Alright, well, that's him away. And for rescuing her, I get a Bomber's Notebook entry, and I also get the Blast Mask. And like I mentioned earlier, this also means that she's able to complete her trip to the bomb shop, which means that the bigger bomb bag is now on sale. So I'll be going to get that shortly, but before I do it, I'm going to head back into East Clock Town. Now that I've got the Blast Mask, I still don't have regular bombs, but I do have the Blast Mask now, so I can get another easy 100 rupees. You know, there's a heart piece in this game that requires you to have 5,000 rupees stored in the bank, so every penny does count. But, um... Most of the rupees that I'm going to be getting right now aren't going to be used for that purpose. They're going to just be used for, like, buying explosives or whatever. So, if you just hug the wall here, this sculpture is not going to bother you. Just barely out of range. And one way to use the blast mask that avoids taking damage, if you just put the mask on, hold your shield out and press B, he doesn't take damage. I'm not sure if that's like an oversight or something, it probably is intentional. 
but I'm certainly grateful for it. Alright, so I've got max rupees that I can hold right now. To get the other wallet, I need to go and do something great B. I'm not going to do that for a little while, probably quite a while actually, but quite a bit later on. So I'm not really going to have to hold 500 rupees for some time. It's not really urgent at all. But um, now that I have all of this, I'm going to head back to West Clock Town. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that I can do here in East Clock Town. I don't think there is right now. Oh, I forgot to go to the Great Fairy. Actually, I'll, I'll go there next, after I've got the bomb bag, actually. That's what I'll do. Because I need to... I need to go and get that mask, since I've got the Stray Fairy again. In fact, I'll do that first, because it makes more sense to do it in that order. Because um, there's a couple of things that I want to be doing in West Clock Town after I buy the bomb bag. Alright, I, I think maybe if you return it as Deku Link, she might still give you the mask just because she's already given me the the magic meter, obviously, so there's no need for her to give me that again. But yeah, she's going to give me the Great Fairy Mask, which is going to be immensely helpful in the dungeons. For an any percent run, it's completely useless, but given that this is 100%, I need to collect all the Stray Fairies in the dungeons, and we'll cover what that means later on when I actually get into them, but yeah, it's um, this is going to make it a lot easier. So, yeah, I guess she's just healing me, even though I'm pretty sure I was at full health. It's just a little animation just always happens, I guess. God, she really is massive. Look at the size of that mask compared to her head. I never realised how big she was. Alright, so now Link looks to get like her. But Link gets to look like her, I mean, Jesus, I'm getting confused here with my own words. Too many of them start with a letter L, that's the issue. Alright, okay, so I've already got four masks. I'm going to get a couple more in this segment. Including a few that you would think you can't really get this early, but obviously this is me playing the game, so of course you can get them. But yeah, back to West Clocktown for now. I don't think I got a Bomber's Notebook entry for that. I guess there isn't one for the fairies. So I'll deal with these two later on. I don't have any use for them right now. Just pop into the bomb shop. Yeah, and the bomb bag that's here now is the bigger one. This is going to let me hold 30 bombs. So, yeah, just grab this one. And it's already full as soon as you get it, which is handy. And I want to buy some bomb chews as well. Uh, I'll buy... I mean, I think you can already hold, like, 40 bomb chews, regardless of the size of your bomb bag, but... Can I buy it? No, I was too slow. I'm sure if you do that quick enough, you actually can get another set before it counts down, as long as it says 40 or above when you actually press E. But it doesn't really matter too much. 20 is fine, so... Let's see. What I want to do now is, if you come over here and look into the West Clock Town, just, oh sorry, into South Clock Town, from West Clock Town, you can see that there's an owl statue in there. You know, that's supposed to be like the one that I've bypassed in South Clock Town, but it's actually a completely different one entirely. So, I want to get to that, I want to activate that one. I'm going to play the inverted song of time, actually, just in case this takes me a little while. I don't want the dawn of the second day thing to interrupt what I'm about to do. I'm sure it won't, I'm sure I'll be fast enough, but just just want to be safe, you know? But, um, yeah. You can see it there. How do I get to it? I can't just run to it. If I try to run to it, it just takes me into South Clock Town. And there's the statue, untouched. So, how do I get to it? I need to find a way to get over the loading zone. And how I'm going to do that is by hovering. So I'm going to activate ISG, I'm going to interrupt the crouch stab by reading this sign up here. As you can see, my sword is now flashing, this means I've got ISG. Now, hovering in this game is a lot easier than it was in Ocarina of Time. The reason for that is that when an explosive explodes, its entire blast radius is, like, touched on the first frame. Whereas in Ocarina of Time, it expands every couple of frames or whatever. This means that I can just, uh... Let me just get the camera where I want it. I can just like use explosive and it'll just keep me in place. So I'm going to bomb chew hover up the wall. I'm going to backflip and then press the button for the bomb chew, which is C down, and the button for the shield, which is R at the same time. And I'm just going to backflip right away and keep doing that. So let's try it. It's important that you do this really fast because if you, if you wait too long before shielding, then the bomb chew will just run up the wall rather than exploding. So one more. I'm going to use some bombs now, just to make this a little bit easier with my bomb chew count. So yeah, as you can see, I'm, I'm out of bounds now. Just inching my way over to this owl statue. 
very mysterious owl statue. That's going to be very useful in this playthrough. Well, not particularly useful, but very cool at least. Uh, I'll do one more. Okay, so I'm in here now. I'm going to activate it. I've still got ISG, so I can just run straight into it. So, this is now active, right? This is the owl statue that I've activated in the fake West Clock Town. So, what happens if I save at it? I mean, this alone should be proof that it's not, like, the same one that you see in South Clock Town. Because, look what happens when I load my file up. It puts me in here, the Mayor Residence. So, I wonder if I can actually get Kafee's mask right now. I don't think so. I don't think she's here unless it's like, yeah, unless it's like the start of the first day. That's not a big deal. But, um, I'll come back and get that mask another time. It's, I don't need it for a long time. But um, yeah, it's just kind of a weird little quirk that it puts you there. But I want to show that um, it actually hasn't activated the statue in South Clock Town. Because that fact is going to be very, very important later on. So let me just prove to you that that is the case. As you can see, this one is still inactive. I'm not going to activate it. That's going to completely ruin what I'm going to do later on. But if I go back into West Clock Town, and I turn around, you can see that it is active. So, like I said, that'll be very useful later on. It's not particularly useful right now, but um, I'll cover that more later on. Just just remember that fact that I've like hit that statue in the fake South Clock Town, but I've not hit the real one. Just keep it in mind. I'll remind you all when I get to that part in the playthrough, but, you know. Alright, so we're back into Mina Field. I want to go to Great Bay first. How do I get to Great Bay? I don't have the horse. Well, that's not an issue because we already know that you can hover in this game and that it's really, really easy to do. So I'm just going to do that. That's how I'm going to go over the fence. There are a couple ways you can get over this fence. You know, you can use Goron Link, but obviously I don't have him. We just get ISG real quick. That's it. Two explosives and we're over. So that's a pretty big sequence break right there, you know, I've managed to get to the third area in the game, I've never been to the swamp, I've never been to the mountains. Well actually that's not technically true, in the first segment I did go to the mountains, or I started to go there, but I didn't really get very far. And I didn't do anything in them anyway, but in this one, I'm gonna head on over and get the Zora mask right away, and I'll be fast forwarding the cutscene during it, which is great. I love fast forwarding cutscenes. Just so much easier. But I'm going to do a super... Oh, hold on a minute. I'm going to try and do a super slide. The super slide is another trick that's been made so much easier in this game. Just because of the blast radius thing. I'm going to roll onto the ball with my shield up and try to grab it just as it explodes. Uh, I was way too early, so I've got a ground jump. That's fine, though. I'll try again. Again. I'm not very good at this, but... um, I was way too slow that time. But it is definitely easier than it is in Ocarina of Time. You take my word for it. Okay, got it that time. So I'm now moving really, really fast into the water. And the Zora that I'm going to try and save is over here. And I believe there's going to be a small graphical glitch here. Yep, where the water actually looks like water instead of having that blue tint. It actually looks clear. So I'm going to grab him and push him in. You know, it's a good thing that I got to him on day one. Because if it was day two, he'd actually be further out. It would take longer for me to push him in. Okay, so he's on shore, and I want to point something out here, which is uh, pretty funny, honestly. So he's going to get up now, right? And just watch how long it takes him to get from where he is to where he stops moving, right? Everyone is constantly going on about how slow King Zora is in Ocarina of Time. Well, let me tell you something. This cutscene right here is literally longer than that. Honest to God, it takes... I can't remember how much longer it is. It's not much longer, it's maybe a couple of seconds longer, but still. So this guy's probably like King Zora's son or something like that. He just walked right through me there. Nice. But, I mean, it doesn't feel like it's longer, see, because, like, the camera's moving and he's walking about. It doesn't feel like it's longer. I'm close enough to do this. I'll just play the song of healing. That's going to heal him. But I'm not going to sit through the ten-year-long cutscene. So let's just turn the frame limiter off. And look how nice and fast this is. You know, it's funny how this cutscene actually is emulated perfectly on the the real emulator, but like on the GameCube version of this game, it's a complete disaster. It's just funny how that happens. 
So I've got the Zora mask, got it before the Goron mask, which is nice. Um, you know, the main reason that I've uh, picked this one up now is so that I can get something that you're not supposed to get until far later on. But um, let's just see what I can do right now. So there's an L statue over on the platform in the water. I'm not going to hit it. By the way, I'm pretty sure the first frame after this... Oh, never mind. This, when I did this in practice, like Link was still bowing his head when I turned to the right. I don't know why he wasn't doing it there. But yeah, I've got the Zora mask. In the previous video, I mentioned that like the first time you put on a transformation mask, it does this little cutscene. If you put on another transformation mask that you've already had the cutscene for first, and then put it on, you can skip it. So, there's really nothing more for me in Great Bay. Um, I guess I've got two options now. I could either, like, do the Song of Time to get back to Clock Town, or I could just hover back over the wall. I think I'm going to hover back over the wall. Like I said, there's nothing more for me, but it's important to note that I now have this entry on my map screen, right? I've now got Great Bay saved here. In fact, uh, just while I'm here, I'm going to go and activate the other one, just for the hell of it, because there's like another location in Great Bay, I want to get that active on my map as well. And I think it's just through this loading zone here, so we'll do that first of all. Should be a Zora cape or something. Um, no, I get... oh, wow. I wonder why it glitched up like that. Maybe it's because it's like about to turn into day two. Oh well. I don't care. So uh, look how smooth the swimming is in this game. It's so fast if you just dolphin dive everywhere. The DS version is completely gimped. This. In order to move at this speed in the DS one, you have to be holding an R, which wastes magic. Alright, so let's just get up here. I'm not going to activate that statue, but I'm going to head in here. I'm pretty sure this is where it like adds it to your map. There's a bunch of things that I can do in here, none of which I'm going to do for a long time. I just want to come here to add it to my map. So, let's see... It should be there now. Yeah, I've got two locations now, which is what I wanted, so... Jeez, I feel like at this point it'd be faster to just um, play the Song of Time, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to head back. That's actually the entrance to the third dungeon right there, the thing with the big turtle. But, um, that's going to be far later on. I am probably going to complete the dungeons in a bit of a weird order in this playthrough. Um, it's not going to be like Ocarina of Time where it was specifically done in reverse dungeon Oh, for God's sake, why did it put me back here? Where it was done in reverse dungeon order on purpose, um... But, yeah, it's probably going to be a little bit weird. You know, I'm kind of assuming that most people who are watching this are at least somewhat familiar with the game. Maybe not played it yourself, but you've probably seen it. Probably know what the premise of the game is or whatever. But, um, it's not really a big deal if you don't. Like I said, I'm allowing the cutscenes to come in. By the way, I'm pretty sure if you get to the right bit here, you can, like, backflip through this wall. I know you can, I've done it before, I just need to find the right spot. Is it here? Ugh, whatever, who cares? Oh, there it is, got it, I got it, cool. <laughs> I was about to give up as well. In fact, there's another glitch that you can do over here. Which is... Oh no, I can't do it right now, in fact. That's right, you need to have Gorn Link, I think. Or maybe I can do it, maybe... Alright, let's try this. Just Let's just have a bit of fun with this. If I stand here... Line up so that I'm going to land on top of this little platform. Place a bomb down. Behind me, and this should give me a nice long jump over there. Let's just see, shall we? Nope. Okay, I think I just wasn't holding up, but it's okay, I don't really care too much. I'm just going to head back into the field now. I've got the Zora mask, which is what I came here for, so... God, I'm going to die. Well, I mean, I'm obviously not going to die, but... I had to see it. My health, my health is bleeping. Getting stuck behind little walls. God, I'm going to have to find some hearts soon, because that is going to drive me nuts. Honestly, I hate it. Really does my head in. It's probably even more annoying for you guys. Alright, so I'm going to have to hover back over the wall. Probably shouldn't have done that quite so far away, but <laughs> who cares. I want to get the camera good. So 
It's a bit higher coming back the way. Uh, in fact, I know what I can do. There's a heart piece I can get in here. I'm going to get that. That'll fix the issue. At least I think it should. How many heart pieces have I got right now, actually? Yeah, two. Maybe it won't. But um, yeah, I'm pretty sure if you knock this thing down, it's got like a heart piece in it, yeah. I thought it was random, but I guess it's not, because I, I, like, I remembered that it was the one at the back, right? But I, I don't know, I just had a feeling it was random. Alright. Cool, so it does refill your health, even though it wasn't a, a full heart container. Probably gonna have to start keeping track of which heart pieces I've got, because th there are a lot in this game. Like, a real lot. You only get four heart containers from bosses and dungeons. The rest of them are made up from heart pieces, so... Alright, is there anything I can do on the second day in Clock Town? I don't think there is. Um, no, I don't think so. I think I'm just gonna... Actually... Well, actually, what I want to show off is... Something in the laundry pool. Like, the most infamous side quest in this game is the Andrew Cafe one, where you're trying to, like, reunite them, you know, he's, like, been turned into a child or whatever. And you're trying to sort that whole thing out. But, um, yeah, it's, it's really long and tedious. A lot of people don't like it, understandably so. And part of it involves getting inside Cafe's house, but the door's always locked, right? I mean, you can come over here and ring the bell, and he'll come out. Like that, right? But as soon as you try to get in, he'll just run back in. Now, at certain parts in the side quest, you know, you are able to get inside there. But, um, why can't I get out? But I don't want to have to play through all that, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here, hug this wall as a Zora, side top, and he grabs onto this. And this allows me to just run around the boundary, just like this. And when I get over here, I can just line up like this, side flip, and then just do an attack forward, and he'll land inside the loading zone. Now this lets me get inside. Now this is pretty useless right now, I mean Kefi's not even here even though we saw him go back inside. But if you do this on the third day, the game assumes that you've done like parts of the, the Andrew Kefi quest to get this far, so let's just uh... I hate that you can't put it over that, whatever. Let's just make it the third day. But yeah, as I was saying, it assumes that you've done parts of the Andrew Kefi quest enough to be able to get like what happens inside that house to happen. So I'm going to make it the third day and glitch inside again because the door will still be locked. Come on. Yeah, that, that in itself is a glitch by the way. If you press the first note of a song too soon after he pulls his instrument out, it doesn't actually count. <laughs> Which is kind of annoying. So you have to wait like a little second. Or not really a second, a couple of frames really. But yeah, whatever. Okay, so we're still in the laundry pool. Door's still locked, but this time... Ugh, oh, come on. I, I should have learned from the last time that you can't just do that. But yeah, if I head back in... Just using the same method. Okay, I wasn't high up enough. That's fine. Just do it again. The reason that I got the Zora Mask was so that I could do this, by the way. Um, I, well, I mean, he has many other uses, but in this video, this is pretty much all it's going to be. Um... Because you can't get up here as normal Link, at least not without hovering. I don't want to waste more explosives, so I've headed back in. And since it's the third day now, this guy's here. Wait, where is he? Where is he? Hmm. Did I do something weird that's like... Oh, do you know what it might be? I think it might be because I saved the... Yeah, that <laughs> that's what it is. See, because I saved the grandma on day one, that guy actually isn't there anymore. But, um, that's fine. So what I'll do is I'll just go back to day one. I won't bother putting those 30 rupees in the bank. It's only 30 rupees. It's not worth the, the trip, is it? So we'll just head back to day one. And then I will come back here when it's on day three again. And the guy should be there. Right, okay, you're going to fast forward this. It's already annoying me with how slow it is. Come on. In fact, I'm just going to leave it fast forward and we can just do this. Because that way it's not going to take much time at all. 
Like I'm play I'm actually playing the song so slowly because it's sped up. But whatever. It's, it's actually quicker just to do this than it is to go and see the grandma in the in the inn. So yeah, I'm sure you guys are already appreciating the fact that I'm playing on emulator. By the way, I just want to point out something. This dog is like the most racist thing ever. Look, if you're a Deku, it just hates you. It attacks you. It doesn't take any health off you, which is nice. If you're a normal Link, it just behaves normally. Where is it? I've lost it. It's disappeared. There it is. And if you're Zora Link, it like admires you. Like, <laughs> if you're a Goron Link, it's like a 3D as well, which is kind of funny. But oh well. So it's now the final day. I haven't saved the grandma, which means that, you know, she was robbed on the night of the first day. And it means that if I go back inside... Actually, I wonder if it was because I went inside on day two already. I don't know. But my point is, like, if you go inside on day three, the game assumes that you've done part of the Andrew Cavey quest, so... I can just do that. And there should be someone here waiting for me this time. Yeah, there he is. It's the guy from, like, the curiosity shop. If you talk to him, he's going to give me the mask that Keithy's usually wearing, which is a Keaton mask. Which looks like Pikachu, at least that was their inspiration for it. That's actually a fact. And, um, they give me the priority mail, which you're supposed to get pretty late into the Andrew Keithy quest, so... You know, the Keaton mask is something you usually get pretty late into the game. You know, because you don't typically do that side quest early on. But, um... Oh, that was cool. I should have done that the last time. But what I want to do now, actually, is make it the night of the final day. If I can play the damn song. Oh my god, come on. Okay. Because I'm going to get another mask that you're not supposed to get until far later as well. So let's just get to that point. If I go and see the postman on the night of the final day and give him the priority meal, he'll go and deliver it because he's like feeling all down or whatever that, you know, the moon's about to crash, everyone's about to die. Or something like that. I don't know what his story is. I never pay attention to the text in this game. But, um, yeah. You give him like this one last job and he's quite happy so he goes and delivers it to Kefi's mother who's in the milk bar. And, uh, that lets you get another mask. I am going to have to do this again later on because there's like two possible outcomes. If you deliver this meal to the mother yourself, you get one item. It's like a bottle with milk in it or something. But if you let the postman do it, you get another mask. And that's what I want to get first. So, you know, he's going to take his time to get there. So I'm just going to go and do something else in the meantime. I guess I can like grind a little bit of rupees. Save myself some headaches later on. I'm going to move about as a Zora because he's actually a little bit faster. Okay. So that's how many masks have I gotten so far? Jesus, <laughs> I've got six and I will have a seventh one by the time this video is over, so... That's already... Already quite a lot. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna head over here. This guy is blocking it again, not an issue. I mean, I can do this as Zora Link, but I want to show that you can do it as normal. Like, if you just back walk in, you can jump straight over him. But the code would be the same as it was before. What was it, like, 5, 4, 1, 2, 3, or something? I don't know. 5, 2, 1, 4, 3, I think that was it. But I'm just going to come in here and get some rupees in the meantime. I need to wait for the postman to go and visit um, Kefi's mother in the milk bar. And he does that, like... I don't even know when he does it. I think it's, like, close to midnight or something by the time he comes out of the bar, which is when I need to see him. Because I can't actually access the bar myself. I mean, I could through a glitch, but it takes, like, a million explosives, and it's not worth it. Okay, so, and there is another quick 100 rupees that I can grab. I'm going to get this a stupid way, though, just for the hell of it. I'm going to use a gainer to get it as a Zora. Probably should have been a Zora when I was in the water there, because I just walked right through it rather than... Uh, Rather than swimming slowly as normal, Link. Alright, so, you know, I could, like, just run across the top of these again. But like I said, I want to do it the stupid way. So, let's just back walk over here for quickness. This wall's kind of weird, it doesn't let you target it properly, but if I just do a gainer on it... It's kind of difficult, because it doesn't let you target it properly right now. I don't know why that is, it normally does. 
Right, I'm going to pause well for it then, so I'm going to hold down an A. And when I see him moving, eventually. Okay, and then I'm going to hold Z. There we go. Alright, so that's me up to max rupees again. I'm going to go and stick these in the bank. And I think the postman... Oh! He's already been in, has he? Alright, okay, cool. That was quicker than I thought it would be, so I can just talk to him. And he's going to give me the postman's hat. Which is another mask you don't get till much later on, usually. Look at this, he's going to prance right through the guard. Look at that. Lovely. Love it. I guess they just assumed that you would always have spoken to the guard by now. Oh well, whatever. Let's just go and uh, fire this money into the bank. So actually, there's something I can quickly grab with the postman's hat. If you look into a mailbox with it, you get a heart piece. There's only one in there. It doesn't matter which postbox you talk to. Any of them work. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't accidentally activate that. That would have put a real wrench in the work. So I would have had to have redone this segment, which would have annoyed me. So let's just go and put the money in the bank. So you can tell who you are, regardless of which form you're in. Just kind of weird. So yeah, I should have 400 or something in there. Yep, brilliant. So I guess with that, I'm going to end this segment. And I'm just going to play the song of time again, take us back to day one, because there's nothing else I can really do on this cycle anyway. So I guess it's kind of cool that like two of my segments so far, or two out of two of them, I should say, have both ended on playing the song of time. I think that's like a nice way to end them. Maybe I should try and do that every time, except I definitely won't. But um, yeah, thank you for watching guys, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.